right guys, let's go ahead and kick it off here. So here it is, the LS3. You wanna source your power plant and your transmission. They're used, get a crate motor. I ended up buying the long block off of Craigslist, um, an LS3. It only had like 25,000 miles on it, still kind of went through it. And so everything's brand new in the motor. I put a BTR stage uh, three cam in it, bolt-ons, headers. Yeah, it turned out pretty nice, man. I just love this NA setup. So let's kind of talk through a few of these things, what it took to sort of like uh, get this thing rolling. Kind of the first thing I want to talk about is obviously you're going to have to figure out what mount you want. There's a lot out there. Uh, for me, what I did was the ICT billet. And most of them are pretty standard unless you get like the total adjustable ones, which I don't really recommend unless you have a reason to just totally, you know, have, you know, that crazy adjustment. But, and then the Holly puts the motor forward. Typically it puts uh, these, put the engine, basically the back where the uh, small block Chevy was. So your drive shaft works and all that. So kind of the first uh, thing uh, I wanted to kind of keep that as standard as possible. They use the uh, small block Chevy clamshells and you do have to sort of grind the U off of them or they'll sit kind of funny. So speaking of the K member, this is stock K member. I actually like running the stock K member. I like how it kind of covers more area for a street car underneath the car. So I'm a big proponent of, you know, do it like GM probably would have done it today. So I'm just not a fan of all the tubular stuff. I think that stuff's great, probably save some weight. I don't really care about weight for this car. Um, I like how it cradles everything and kind of protects the pan a little bit more. That's, you know, totally up to you. That's what I did. Um, I didn't notch it at all either because I have the AC up, up mount, kind of mounted up top here. So I didn't mount the AC low. Didn't have to notch it for that. And with these plates, I actually have maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe a little more between the pan and the K member. So that actually worked out really nice. Uh, the pan, use the stock LS1 F body pan, works great. I don't see any reason. It's pretty e economical. Uh, it works great with these engines. It bolts up to the LS3 and just any LS platform. So I don't know why you would deviate from that, but uh, it's just proven and, and that's what I use for that. Pretty simple. Front accessories, I did the LS1 front accessories. Now I recently, and you'll see a video where I changed this around because I'm, I'm uh, uh, LSA is blowers in a future. So I got their LSA uh, blower kit, which I had to flip the, the uh, throttle body upside down. Um, but these are basically the F body spacing and their kit moved it out so I could run an eight rib, um, eight rib pulley here. And so once I put the blower on, they provide the belt. You can kind of adjust it here. But Dirty Dingo has a nice high mount set. Recommend that or the ICT billet. Uh, that's another one, that body uh, kit. I went with the F body kit on, on the front accessories and it worked pretty well, well. And then typically on the power steering pump, you can actually use, if you're using the F body uh, pump, uh, you can also keep the reservoir on it. I did have to move this one because I had to, uh, because of this bracket here, and I'm, I would switch to from a low mount alternator up to the high mount with this new LSA adapter uh, front accessory kit. But typically, before this was lowered, and then I had the, the standard power steering pump here. Now, note that you will also, the, the lines and all that kind of stuff run to the pump somewhere in there you can use your stock third gen lines and you can put them on a vice and just kind of carefully tweak them around run the uh, high pressure up or under it and then hook back around like this so it'll be kind of like that it threads right into the f body ls1 pump so you don't have to change any lines or anything and then the and then the low pressure is obviously uh, just clamped rubber hose thing you have to consider is the coils. I did the ICT billet coil 
bracket just because I thought it cleaned it up quite a bit. Also ran these DEI heat shield uh, boots, which work for super nice since they're all like all around the damn headers here. But these are the DB585 base coil pack. Uh, they have the heat sinks. So uh, I think they come off the truck, some of the trucks. Um, but these are supposed to clear if you're keeping the AC vat box, that's supposed to clear. I did have to just just slightly, maybe a 16th of an inch, just kind of sand the edge of it down and it clears pretty good. Um, so it's not bad at all. Um, and that's kind of what I did. All right, let's talk about AC because I got a bunch of questions on this. On the Gen 4 and specifically um, what I'm running, um, and I'm running like the E38, but actually it's the, it's the GM performance part E67 ECM. Um, it doesn't have a input because you need a body control module, sort of the way the newer models work um, to get an input to sort of bump the throttle and stuff like that when you turn on the AC. There's, so there's no AC request on the ECM, okay? Uh, now, what I have is a standalone system. That, that just means that it's not going through the ECM. When you turn on, when you basically turn it on within the car, um, I removed the low pressure switch that was, um, that used to be uh, on the car. I removed that low pressure switch. Um, as you can see here, I'm not running that. And also the high pressure switch, which is down there. Uh, I'm not running that either. And basically that's just a switch when it gets to a certain level, right? It connects 12 volt or the power. So I connected those two wires. I just cut that sensor out on both the low and the high. And then I have a trinary switch right here. And that essentially does a couple things. I provide that same power coming to it. When the pressure of the AC system gets to the right pressure uh, between the low and the high, it's actually uh, a threshold there, if you will. Um, it actually energizes the circuit uh, for the AC power, okay? So that's just a 12 volt coming in. This is a Sandin 508, by the way. Um, so it energizes that, but it also uh, provides a ground signal uh, to uh, a relay that I have that actually uh, fires off the fan whenever you turn uh, the AC on. So even if it isn't at temp, uh, when you turn on the AC, I actually have it joined into the same circuit as I think the high fan setup. So I'm running a couple re relays on that. So that's uh, sort of how it's wired. It's pretty simple, actually. You just have to get that trinary switch. The input is a 12 volt. The, uh, and then you also need an input coming from your chassis or ground. Uh, and then it has an output, output 12 volt and also an output uh, ground. So when it gets to that certain temperature, then it basically triggers the coil and the relay. And then it also provides power to your compressor. Now I'm running actually third gen uh, AC components pretty much, except for obviously the high mount. I used to have the R4 actually high mounted here. Um, that thing just wasn't as efficient. So I switched it out. And I am also, this is all stock third gen here. Um, I did sort of improve my AC system. I did put a bunch of foam around the, uh, the EVAP to keep air from passing or over it and around it. So I kind of just used some little, you know, thin pad, uh, adhesive uh, foam uh, that you can get like Home Depot. Uh, and then that's really, that was a big difference. Oh, and then I also, because this is an early third gen, it doesn't have the uh, vacuum controlled uh, bypass valve. And on the LS, so you can see this is a four way. So you need a four way and they actually sell. So if you have like, I don't, I don't know if it's 86 or 87 when they started, uh, when essentially when you turn on your AC, it provides vacuum from your uh, HVAC controls, if you will. Um, and that's what typically will switch over uh, your, your bypass. In my case, I actually have electronic bypass here. I bought, I think it's old air. Um, so I have a switch inside and I'll, I'll take you around on that real quick. Now in Florida, the, the whole reason for that is you just get better AC. Let's see. 
lighting's not that great. Yeah, there you go. So I have it right next to my um, ODVC uh, connection, connection there, OED2 actually. Um, so here's, if I turn the heat, so there's like three or four days in Florida, <laughs> maybe I want heat or defrost. I'll just turn that up. Otherwise, I just keep it closed. So it's a really nice sort of system there. And that keeps the heat out of your, uh, that keeps the heat out of your sort of evaporator sort of area, right? Um, so that improved it. And, you know, my temperatures coming out of my AC is super cold. I think it's like 39 or 40 between 39 and 41, something like that. The key is you gotta have some really good fans to pull that condenser um, in a good shroud. That's that's the other thing I kind of worked on over the past couple years. The hoses are actually customized. Um, so you can see here, um, you got low and the high side. Um, so these, these two are custom and I just have that kind of looped in through that to kind of hide it. That's this one kind of comes up under and then loops through this bracket in here. So, um, so that's, that's that one. Um, other than that, you know, it's a stock condenser. Um, it's the stock, uh, EVAP, uh, the, uh, accumulator, all that stuff is stock. So, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it on the, uh, on the, on the AC system. I'll probably do another video in depth on, the, on more details on that. All right, let's talk about the fuel system. I feel like I, was, I may have pioneered or like was one of the first guys and I just did it by accident um, when I ended up using the fourth gen tank, but I used the stock fourth gen lines going to the, the stock fourth gen uh, fuel filter. And then the fortune also has like a T block, um, which has the which has the return going back to the tank, the fortune plastic tank. System um, is I did run the Racetronics uh, hot wire kit. It comes with a 255 uh, LPH, which is fine for my horsepower rating. I'm probably like somewhere between 470 and 500 at the wheels. It does a great job uh, with the power level that I'm at now. So in the hot wire kit, it's, upgra it's upgraded wiring. It has a relay system. Um, so it's actually really cool the way it works. And it actually, the relay actually comes, you know, to your, uh, the main wire comes to your alternator. So it's getting full power to it. Switches over. Um, oh, your, uh, your zero to 90 gauge, uh, zero to 90 ohm. So you got to get a, gonna have to get in order to get your your gauges work um, let's see if I turn this on yeah so um, that is a zero to 90 ohm uh, just like the third gen uh, and I'll put a part number it's called a Herco um, it's like 25 bucks for the sending unit um, and it's on eBay and it works great and that'll actually uh, that that sending unit will actually do the zero to 90 ohms as opposed to the fourth gen which I think goes up to 255 ohms so your your if you use that your uh, your gas uh, level isn't going to show correctly harness um, so I ended up getting the LS3 controller kit and this is actually part of that so that comes with your fuses and relays. It's called your control center. Um, that actually controls your fuel pump, your fans coming off your ECM. It has the, all the relays and the fuses around that. Um, so that's, this is actually part of that. Um, I know a lot of people are doing the Holly um, Terminator and that's, that's probably what, I, what I've done if uh, that was out um, when I did this swap. So, uh, pretty happy with it though. Honestly, I don't ever tune it or go back into the tune or anything else. Um, I set it, forget it, drive it, and hopefully I don't have to screw with it again. <laughs> um, so that's kind of, that's the way I use the car anyway. Um, and then I added this little relay center here. This is just, uh, for the high speed fan, uh, in the GM performance parts, uh, ECM, the E67 has a few limitations and it only, it actually merged the pinouts for the low speed and the high speed into one uh, circuit. 
So I actually split that and put a separate relay and then set the tune where uh, it had a higher sort of fans turn on. Speaking of fans, uh, I ended up doing, uh, I went a couple different routes. First I had the stock third gen radiator, then I had stock with the stock third gen. Uh, it just wasn't doing the job. The LS3 aluminum um, blocks, and you can look at any of the Corvette forums, they actually end up running a little bit hotter uh, than your iron block LS1s and LM7s and all that. So a typical uh, is 205, you know, with the 195 uh, thermostat. And so uh, I always had sort of issues with mine. So I ended up doing a Champion dual pass it's a LS conversion radiator they have on their site, which is cool because it actually has both hoses, the top and the bottom one on, uh, on that side. And they also provide the steam port. So you can see here, there's the steam port kind of coming through and that's the hose. And so they actually provide uh, a port for that steam uh, port connection. So it's really built uh, for the LS to give you a nice cat, whatever. Uh, but man, this thing cooled it down almost 10 degrees just by itself. Um, so that was really cool. And then I ended up going with uh, Dodge Intrepid fans. Um, so uh, they actually fit. I had to trim the ears off and then I trimmed around the, uh, the steering box and they fit right in. They actually fit really nice. Um, so I just had to do a little bracket here to kind of keep the keep it in and then I this radiator um, so I used heater hoses I don't know if you can see it but I used, what I used on the radiator I used the heater hose instead of those real thick isolators and that brought this down I did have to um, sort of like open the holes out in this cover here a little bit and then this actually is the stock one I trimmed it up I trimmed it out from the original one and uh yeah man it looks stock almost <laughs> and that's really what i was going for right um this is something i just recently did here um that's the uh, over cool the the overfill for the coolant um so i got that this is kind of your overfill uh for your coolant reservoir and i had it underneath the here uh but you know I, you know, you don't typically, you don't tend to check them uh, if you have to pull this cover off. So um, I saw a buddy of mine, how they did his, and I was like, damn, that's a pretty cool idea. And mine was empty. I was like, man, I got to get better access to that. So I just welded up a little bracket and mounted that inside there. Um, so that's cool. Um, let's talk about the, uh, the T56 conversion. Uh, man, this is one of the funnest part of the builds as well. Um, I had a 700R4 transmission and I ended up, uh, you know, converting it over to the six speed uh, T56. Uh, that was based off of the LS uh, series. Um, so that was uh, uh, the 98 Camaras on up. Um, so I had those, I had essentially that. Uh, so really good condition uh you can see i got this uh, i kind of want to change this knob out i got some i want to really get the stock third gen and get this recovered uh that's one of the things i haven't really done actually a lot in the interior um so i got some pretty big plans for that that's another day um but i really want the essence of a stock car um so the transmission um t56 and uh, stock fourth gen, stock, you know, fourth gen. Uh, and this is something I want to upgrade later. I think get the MGW uh, because I think this thing just feels a little crappy. Uh, so that's definitely something I'm, I'll, I'll probably upgrading, be upgrading pretty quick. Um, now uh, for this one, obviously, you know, as you um, start to look at these, uh, there's in terms of wiring it up, um, it's really simple. There's a speed sensor that goes into your ECM uh, and then you'll have to configure the tune for that. Um, there's also a reverse lockout. So the idea is um, you essentially have a solenoid um, that basically uh, 
makes it difficult to put it in reverse if it's over like five or 10 miles an hour, I forgot what it is. Um, so that's a pin out that, you know, essentially I had to add that myself uh, with the sensor. So I bought the pigtail, bought the sensor, put that in and then just wired it to the correct uh, pin out. Um, the ECM is actually mounted where the stock ECM uh, used to be. Um, when you take out your original harness, you take out your ECM, follow that wiring through uh, that kick panel all the way through the engine bay and anything that you can unplug is basically removing. And then keep the two plugs here that went to the original ECM that actually runs through the dash um, and that's actually where I tied in a lot of the um, you know, the, the turn on for the ECM ignition. Um, there's a lot of uh, circuits there that you could actually uh, just test and, and wire that straight to, uh, to power your ECM, ECM, get ground, other things like that. Well, let's, uh, so the T56 is pretty much, the other thing is the cross member. I ended up going with the hooker. Um, I originally had the BMR, that thing was terrible. Um, definitely not built for a third gen. It actually made the engine sit way up like this and it literally only had about an inch and a half of clearance and building exhaust around that BMR uh, uh, cross member was a nightmare. I actually had the exhaust shop do it and it just never worked. So I tore all that out and this is just one of the things that you'll do, you know. Um, and, and what I recommend is just finding someone with a similar budget, you know, uh, e either it's a budget build or it's medium or high build. Try to do a lot of the things they did. Um, don't try to recreate the wheel on these things because you will end up, you know, breaking out grinders and redoing stuff. And uh, you can be going off on a whole new path down some rabbit holes. Um, so I got that. Uh, I ended up going with the hooker or the holly. Um, and you know, that thing's really nice because it has the double humps, um, uh, in terms of the exhaust, it has the double hump, uh, so you actually can tuck both exhausts coming up under it as it's, as it's coming through to the headers. Um, so speaking of the headers, so let's talk about the exhaust a little bit. Um, there is... These are speed engineering headers. Man, they're like 280 or 300 shipped. Uh, they have been just amazing. <laughs> I know they're cheap, but damn, they got great clearance and I, they've been on the car a couple years now and they have just been great. I mean, they, I've just had no problems with them at all. So I got that going back to a custom Y and uh, then going back to a Varex muffler um, with just a single sort of exit. The muff, Varex muffler, that actually, you see the wire, it actually has a butterfly in the muffler. So it can be super quiet, which is awesome, man. I mean, you put your wife in it or pull in your neighborhood. I mean, it's, I can hear the motor over the exhaust and then I can open it up and it's a great touring sound, a nice deep throaty sound. So I love this muffler. Then I'm also, I'm getting ready to put a three inch cutout, which is uh, see here, actually right here. So I'm actually gonna run that cutout after the Y and then I made an electric cutout. So that actually this thing's gonna have three exhaust modes. It's gonna have a quiet, a touring, and a stupid loud mode. <laughs> so let's talk about the gauges a little bit. I have a, in the C100, which is a plug, basically um, here going through your firewall uh, to your engine bay. Um, there is your stock white wire that runs to your, it used to run to your coil. Um, that's the wire you want to use for this. Um, now you, what I did, what, what I ended up doing is you can do a pull-up resistor, um, like a 1K ohm pull-up resistor, which just means that you're providing 12 volt and the white wire. Um, and you, you basically put the uh, resistor, the 1K ohm resistor on the 12 volt, and then Y the two circuits together that go into the gauge. So if you put in your car and the tack isn't moving uh, and you have it wired up, obviously, uh, with that wire, 
um, then chances are you're going to need a 12 volt. And I actually have a video on this, so I go more into this uh, if you look for that video, um, getting the TAC working for an LA. What I ended up doing though is getting a Dakota Digital uh, TAC module, and that thing is awesome. That kind of eliminates all sort of the uh, herky jerky shit you got to do to get these things working. Um, it's very configurable. You provided a ground, you provided a 12 volt, the white wire, the input wire for the TAC, and then the output going to this. And then you can kind of, it has DIN switches, but the new one has a dial. So you can just dial that thing in. So open up your tuner, right? Figure out your right RPM, what it's running, and then you just dial it in. So get that, it's about 89 bucks. So Dakota Digital uh, has that. It's Dakota Digital has that, it's a TAC module, and that will get that working. All right, next let's talk about the oil pressure. This is something that stumped me. Um, and I just figured out that uh, you can't run, uh, basically I ended up ha having to get an F-Body LS1 oil pressure sensor. Um, and that one is a single wire that runs straight to this gauge. That's it, okay? Um, so the computer doesn't see any oil pressure. Um, now I've seen guys where they actually run out of the back of the engine. Let me show I've you seen that. guys where they, um, so here's, here's, the, here's the oil pressure sensor. It's a single wire that runs straight to the gauge. Well, actually it runs to your C100, which is, sorry, I'm all zoomed in there. Um, it runs to uh, your gauge. I've seen some guys where they kind of build some crazy uh, Y coming off of here and they run two sensors. So there's a two wire sensor that typically comes with these that can run to your ECM. So if your ECM and your harness has that plug for it, then you can just plug that in and then run this one to your gauge. Uh, you know, most people just do this here. Right. So that's gonna get your oil pressure uh, gauge working super nice. We'll just fire it up. There you go. Been running a while, it's kind of warm, so. It's about that when I when, when the engine is, is, is warmed up. Back by another 100 RPM, I think it's off. It's a little high by 100 RPM. So um, normally this thing runs about 780 to uh, 830, somewhere in there. Okay, um, let's talk about uh, this. Uh, the uh, the volts. Uh, so this just works. So I've got a single wire alternator. Uh, once you just plug that in and this just works from your, from your uh, third gen system. I didn't have to do anything with this, which is cool because when I was researching, I couldn't really find much on that. Um, and when I started the car, it just works. So I was like, oh, cool. Um, so uh, I think the key though is uh, there is sort of a, a, a fused junction uh harness that's or wire circuit um it's like goes to your starter and it's like a junction area over on the passenger side on the back of the motor you want to make sure you keep that circuit in there that does your starter and your you know basically ties in your main power uh between your engine and your starter um so i talked about the gas gauge already uh the fuel gauge the biggest thing is that herco um, and I'll put the part number in uh, so you'll have that. The biggest thing is you got to have zero to 90 uh, ohms on that. Uh, okay, the temperature gauge uh, was something that threw me a little bit. Um, so I had a temperature gauge that I ordered, I think I ordered, uh, I forgot what it was, but it had a, it had a two wire, which was cool because it provided uh, the temperature information going back to the ECM, but the gauge didn't work. So you have to get a three wire uh, temperature uh, sensor and I'll show you that. And I'll actually, I'll, I'll put the part number for that one as well. I think it's just an LS1 um, uh, part, but uh, I'll verify and put the part number on that. Yeah, so here's the temperature gauge. We're at the uh, driver's side. Uh